Hi everyone. I'm back to put the signatures in my journal and before I do that I wanted to show you guys what I have done off camera just because it would be redundant to do over and over and over in a video. But you remember I told you that most of the pages in my signatures here were scrapbook papers and the back sides were white. So they were not double-sided sheets. So I wanted to make sure I had something on the plain side. So I added some scrapbook papers and some tissue papers. And I just wanted to show you how it turned out. Uh, all I did was use a glue stick. And sometimes I used some double-sided tape. And I just stuck things down. So this is uh, the original scrapbook paper. I added this piece to the inside where it was just white. Same thing here, scrapbook paper. And this one is still white because I'm going to add this one today just to show you how I'm going to cut this bag apart to cover that, um, that page. This one is also scrapbook paper and I covered it with some tissue paper. Same thing here. This one I covered with some gift wrap. This was from several years back, uh, some gift wrap that I bought and used for my gifts. And I saved some of it because it was just so cute. Uh, this is the little piece of craft paper that I had made a little, like a little envelope, a little pocket out of. I didn't put anything on this side yet, and what I did was on the inside, ah, this is upside down, I'm glad I hadn't attached it yet. <laughs> on the inside, uh, I used that piece of Christmas music paper that I had set up as a separate page. I decided since it was so close in size, I did trim just a little bit off of the craft paper. That I would just go ahead and use that to cover one and um, I was reducing the number of pages that I had in in each signature just because I don't want there to be so many that the book gets way too full once I start adding the fun stuff so I kind of you know put two together basically all right this one is the uh, center of the signature and I added a big piece of gift wrap here and um, then back here we just have the back sides of all those scrapbook papers. This one was this, this one and I added a little bit of scrapbook paper onto that. This one was this one <laughs> and I added a little bit on the inside and I'm going to make a little pocket right here I do believe. I haven't attached it yet I thought in case I change my mind and just want to cut it off I can. So I'm just, you know, leaving my options open. And then this is the inside, you know, the other side of that one that I still need to cover. And I don't think this is going to cover the whole span. I'm not positive, but I don't think it's going to because double, this double would be, of course, there is the gusset inside, which would widen the paper out a little bit more. So it may cover it. It may not. And I may opt to use something else anyway. All right, and then this is the inside of the little flap that goes around the outside. Okay, the second uh, signature I did the same way. This is a piece of tissue paper here. Uh, this inside is a piece of scrapbook paper. And this one is tissue paper also. I haven't done anything to my little envelope that I have in there yet. This one is gift wrap. This one is the center and it is tissue paper. And this one is the inside, the opposite side of this one. And a lot of these papers are used. Uh, this was uh, a gift was wrapped in this and given to me. So there's some little wrinkles in places where the paper was just naturally wrinkled when it was folded and wrapped around something. So um, I just want you guys to know that those are still usable. Just use them. It's, it's so much fun, you know, to get some fun use out of something that's, you know, kind of being upcycled and recycled. So here's the other side of the envelope. Okay, this piece is the opposite of this one. And I put on, I had a scrapbook paper on that one. I mean, the back side, of course, is a scrapbook paper. And I cut this one down a little, so I just folded that over, and I thought that looked so nice to have that little um, that little fold there. Pretty. Okay, and then this one is the other side of this piece. It's also gift wrap. 
and this one is scrapbook paper so that's what my two signatures look like and what I have ended up with now is six sheets six sheets including including the envelope there are six sheets and that makes 24 sides okay so with both of them having six that makes 48 sides altogether for my book so this is how it's looking so far this is going to be of course on the inside here and I just think it's so pretty I'm so excited about getting it all put together okay so what we need to do is um, have a sip of coffee first <laughs> Yeah, that's some good fuel right there. Creative juices. <laughs> okay, look at this pretty mug. It's got a cardinal. I can't tip it too much because my coffee will spill, but it's got a beautiful cardinal and a gold rim around it. It's so pretty. Don't get to use the Christmas mugs very often, so I pulled that one out. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is um, take our template. What I do with it? Well, I guess I need to cover that page first. Let's backtrack for a second. I still need to cover this. No, not this one. It must be this book. Yeah, this one. Okay, so I still need to cover this one. Let me move both of those. And this. Whoops. Sorry about that. I knocked the camera. Okay, I need to cut apart my bag. And... What I'm going to do is just cut the bottom piece out completely. So first I'm going to just cut right close to the edge here. Yeah. Then I'm going to go up in here and just cut around the bottom panel. So now I need to cut apart this. Where did they join it? I'm looking to see where it's been joined together. Right here. I don't think it will tear apart necessarily because it's a thin bag. So I'm not going to even attempt it. I'm just going to cut right down this crease right here. And that little bit will be doubled there, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is what we have to work with. Oh, it does cover the whole thing. How about that? Yep, and I may not even need to use this uh, doubled up piece here. I wonder if that will tear off easily without tearing the... There we go. Okay. Yay. All right, so that's so pretty. And see, it's been all folded up as, you know, as a bag, but once it gets glued down, all of that will just kind of flatten out and go away. <laughs> so I'm happy with that, very happy. All right, so what I was doing earlier was just, um, for something this uh, big, I was doing um, like half at a time, half of like, the one half and then gluing down the other half. When I got to the second signature, I started using some of my double-sided tape uh, that I use in this pink gun, just because it makes the process go so much quicker and it's a lot less messy. So I'm not gonna carry this all the way over even though I'm gonna cover that side. I'm just gonna do one side at a time so I have less less sticky surfaces, you know, in, in play at a time. So 
also what I what I found to make it easier would, was if you just kind of fold up your paper a little bit and just deal with a little bit at a time like just I'm going to deal with this much and that way all of this is not getting the paper's not getting stuck to it just yet so I'm going to just uh, stick it down pretty close to the edge there'll be extra to trim off which is not a problem and then just kind of pressing it down as I unfold it like that I'm just going towards the uh, crease in my page okay so that works out pretty good I mean you can still see some of those fold lines but once you get all kinds of stuff on your paper um, I mean on your page it's not going to matter in the least I mean honestly it's not going to matter at all all right so now we're gonna I think I could um, you know you could take a bone folder and press those creases down and they might lay a little flatter if that bothers you but it, it's just not that it's not that much if you especially if you roll up the paper and just do it a little bit at a time There we go. Okay, so now I can put that back in here. Got to turn this this way. Yep. So that all the ornaments are hanging down. Okay. So that's now how it's going to look. Like that. I love it. It's so pretty. All right, so now what we need to do is get my little template okay this is the inside piece of a file folder and I showed you guys this in a previous video this uh, shows all of the scored lines on the file folder so that you can fold it at I guess these are like quarter inch almost increments anyway I cut that whole little section of, of folds out of the file folder and it actually fits the spine of my journal perfectly I mean I cut it to length but this part worked out perfectly and I didn't even plan that <laughs> it just worked but what I'm going to do is use those two score lines that are in the center but those are going to be the lines where my signatures are going to be sewn in so that's where my holes will go so I need to decide where I want to put the holes and uh, what I'm going to do is a five hole pamphlet stitch and I'm doing that since the book is wide. I can do a three hole if I want. I mean, that's not a problem, but I wanted to do the smaller ones because I do have some smaller bits in these, um, where is it? Like this, and if I've got this one sitting, you know, up here, I want it to be able to be caught by a couple of the stitches and not just one. So that ensures that that's gonna stay put in there and not be loose and wobbly and all that stuff, so. I typically don't measure this. You can if you want to. I just kind of find the center of it. So basically just folding it in half will give you the center if you fold it properly. <laughs> okay, so I eyeball it from this point. So I'm going to put um, a little dot on each line right where I folded it. And then to each end, I come in about an inch. I guess I could measure it on my, my grid right here. I just come in about an inch. If it's a little book, I do like a half an inch. Okay, so I'm going to put a place for a hole on each line there. And I'm going to come in an inch on this side and put, it, put a mark for a hole there on each line. And then all I do is just put one in the center between these two sets of holes so I'm just gonna guess I'm just gonna guess it I'm not gonna it looks to me like that's right about center yep I mean you definitely can measure all this out if you want to 
but I just I don't know that it's necessary um, for a junk journal if you were doing some real special journal you might want to measure it all out but see that's pretty close to even right and that's all I'm going for is just pretty close to even okay so I am going to put a T at the top of what I'm going to consider the top and I'll use that as the top of my book each time so that when I'm laying it in the signatures or in the cover I'll always have this at the top that way we always ensure that all the holes are in the same place as we go through yeah, I finished my coffee so now I can show you the mug yeah pretty beautiful little cardinal and a ribbon with some holly and another cardinal on the other side Isn't that neat it's beautiful I'm just appreciating it because I don't see it very often <laughs> Not even every year. I mean, there's some years goes by that I don't even take out a Christmas mug because I use my Yeti mug all the time that keeps my coffee hot for longer. So you see how I drunk that right down, right? Because it was getting cold. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to make sure I have all of these um, little pieces where I want them, you know, where I want them situated. Like this one I'm situating near the top. This one's coming down a little bit more toward the bottom. And I mean, you can have yours any way you want. I'm just going to do mine like this. I think I'll pull that up just a tiny bit. I don't know. Maybe I'll move it instead of having it at the very top. Yeah, I think I'll bring it down. It'll be fine right there. All right, so then all of these will be the same as the other side. Okay, so now what I need to do is make sure that all of the tall pages are lined up and then I'm going to be clipping my signature together you guys have seen me do this before but I'm going to I'm going to show you with this one signature how I sew it all in and and all and then of course I'll do the same thing with the other one I just probably won't film that one okay so I'm just making sure well before I clip that together what you want to do is make sure that everything is real snug down in into the crease Okay, all right, it appears to be pretty snug there. So I'll put that one on, and then I'll put this one on. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. Okay, I tend to fold these down so that the sewing thread won't get caught on those. Okay, there we go. I should go ahead and punch this. I'm going to just use a little hole punch and punch them. You can use a needle to punch these holes. The signature is a little bit smaller than the cover. I think I'll make it the same length as the signature and then I can adjust the cover because I think that'll be easier to, to deal with. I'm trying to get this in the middle here. So you can see my cover is about a quarter inch uh, longer than what my pages are. So just so that I can make sure this is sitting right in the middle, I'm going to go ahead and trim it off. I can adjust this on the cover I think easier well, it sure does want to um, flip up since I folded it there we go now I can see it okay now we'll put a little T at the top again okay so to put the holes in the signatures I just need to use this as a guide and I'm lining it up with the the crease in the signature and I'm just gonna go right to the crease and I'm gonna mark right on the crease one dot um, where each one of these marks are on my template I'm just gonna put one dot on my signature the two holes we'll use for the cover Okay, so you can see each one of them, well, pretty close. <laughs> I know it's tiny. Okay, and 
I'm going to use my, my awl to punch this through. So I'm just going to the center one first and I'm just going to punch right through. So that's one. The next one. That's two. I'm going to turn this around so I can hold it better. I'm just kind of twisting the awl back and forth to push it through. Alright, so we have our five holes in this signature. I need to do the other signature the same way. Let's do the same thing for the cover. This is the top. Okay, so as you can see this is short now because I trimmed it to match the signatures. So what you want to do is just place it in the center, leaving the same amount at the top and the bottom. Okay, just like that. And then what I'm going to do is make sure that that is sitting right in the right in the pocket right there in the um, spine and once i know that's good then i can mark these holes the same way but i'm going to mark both holes right through the holes that i created with the punch okay all right, good. I can see all of the holes there. Okay, and that's where I'm going to uh, punch again with the awl. And I'm going to probably push the awl through a little bit further because the, the farther you go up, the wider this is. And so it makes the hole a little bit bigger. And when you're working with fabric, sometimes the hole wants to close up a little bit. So I'm going to just make make the hole uh, larger if possible. Let's see how it goes. Got a couple of layers of fabric, so this is a little bit more, you know, a little thicker. But that's good because you want a nice sturdy binding uh, spine, I mean, for your binding. Okay. Oh, good. So you can see how the hole is right here. You see the hole there. So that's good. It, I can see it and it didn't um, close up probably because of the glue, you know, that I used in between these layers. So that's awesome. So now I'm going to the next hole right there underneath it. All right, good. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Okay. And get the rest of these done. Okay. All right, so there you can see, I think, yep, there you can see my five sets of holes. So that worked out really good, and now all I need to do is put my signatures in. So like I said, I'm going to sew in the one, and then uh, you'll see how it's done, and you do both of them exactly the same way. Just 
trying to make sure that I've got this turned the right direction. Oops, that little. Right. Yes, that's the right way. Okay. Okay, so this is going to be my first my first signature. So it's going in the first set of holes right here. All right, so I need my thread. I'm using some thin uh, baker's twine and I just usually measure out mm, roughly three lengths of the height of your of your book okay and you can snip off a little extra if you want to just make sure you have enough all right I've got a big needle here so that I can thread this twine through it. There we go. I'm going to start from the inside of the signature, right in the center. I'm going to go through the hole, and then I'm going to go through this, the same hole in the cover on the first row of holes. There we go. All right. If you're concerned that you might pull your thread through, you can always clip it in with your pages and then it won't go anywhere. See? All right. So the next one is right next to it. I'm going up. You can go up or down either way, whichever way you prefer. Doesn't really matter. It all comes out the same way at the end. Okay. Oh, look at that pretty little stitch on there. <laughs> I love it. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the next one. Go through the, whoops, go through the signature and then through the hole that corresponds with it in your cover. There we go. Oops, okay, pull it. All right. I'm going to go back down through the hole next to it and not not split the thread there. I don't want to connect, you know, split between the layers of that thread because then you won't be able to tighten your your stitches up if it gets caught in the threads. Okay. So that's that's snug. So that's what it's looking like so far. We have two stitches on the outside. All right, then when I get to this point, I'm going to skip the middle hole and I'm going to come, whoops, skip the middle hole and I'm going to come down to the next hole. Okay, push that through and go ahead and put my, put my cover up there and push it through the cover as well as the signature. How's that looking? Yep, looks good. A little bit loose here, but that's okay. We can tighten that up when we get done. Okay, got this one coming up here. We want to put the signature on there also. Yep. Okay. Right. Okay, and then we're going to come back down. Through the hole we just used, we're going to go through that one once again. Try not to go through your thread. And I'm going right into the hole here. Okay. And then we, we are back to the center hole again, so we can go through that one. And hopefully right through the, yep, right through the signature. So what we're, we're trying to do now at this point is get the, the threads on, on either side of this long stitch. And we did accomplish that. 
So we've got this long thread here, and we've got one, one thread on one side of it and one thread on the other because we're going to tie it now, and that way we'll tie right over that, that stitch there. These look good. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to just make a square knot. can hold on to the thread okay and that's all I do just uh, cutting that off leaving the strings for now and then I'm going to do the second signature exactly the same and I'm going to sew it into this set of holes okay so once you get both of your signatures sewn in you can just take your clips off of the um, signatures and then we can take a look and see how everything looks. I'm always excited at this point when I make a journal it's just so much fun whether it's a tiny journal or a bigger journal it is so much fun to feel that finished put together journal in your hands. <laughs> That's awesome. Everything is right side up here. Is everything right side up here? Yes. Whew. All right, good. All right. Excellent. It's so fun. All right, so we have a journal. <laughs> and I'm very excited to um, start playing in it and uh, doing some I love this by the way where it's starting to unravel a little bit I'd love it I'm just letting all those threads hang there look <laughs> it just gives it a fine homespun feel to me and it gives it character and I just love it so of course uh, you know this little uh, tag is going to be going on here which I will be gluing on now that I've got everything together I'll glue that on at some point so this journal is already pretty um, Pretty full with just paper so we'll see what happens as it as it goes along I will be filming more segments in the creation of this journal decorating the pages and just playing and having fun using the stuff that's been in my stash for all these years and I hope you guys will create along with me I hope you're making one of these little journals and I wanted to let you guys know that I have some Christmas napkin packs now available in my Etsy store I decided to save some of my napkins and instead of using them on these pages I wanted to use them in smaller portions like I did on this uh, little tag where I added the little napkin bit on top of the collaged tag so um, I saved those back just to play with and um, I did put a few sets in my Etsy store so head over there if you don't have any Christmas napkins to create with and we'll be back soon with some playtime so all right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.